What's going on guys? Welcome to Rabbits Use Cars. How about a little American muscle in the warehouse, kids? And I'm talking, it's hard to get much more iconic than a classic copper 1971 Chevelle SS. Love it. Bucket seats, console, slick as glass, and she's all mine. But anyway, enough about the car, beautiful car. You can see that. You can see me. I'm here to talk to you. Something that I felt like I need to make. This is kind of like another PSA. Oh, Rob's reaching out to you today. I'm a helper. Facebook Marketplace is quickly becoming one of the biggest ways to find cars online. You know, and I got a lot of young guys, and I got a lot of older guys, and old guys, and girls, and everybody that watch this and i got a lot of you guys that flip that, that buy cars you know and and you know and i got a lot of dealer friends i mean this is for everybody this is something that i've read across and actually a couple of my buddies have came across it i actually had a fan of the show reach out to me and explain it to me and show me the deal and I actually talked to him on the phone because i was that intrigued about it you know it's an old school trick but this trick's starting to show itself again and you know you gotta think Kind of like what we covered back in the odometer stories, you're starting to see this come back. Even in the age of Carfax and and things like that, these guys are getting slick. It's it's actually kind of funny, but it's scary too. You know, like I said, I talked to this guy. He reached out to me. He's like, "Man, I got burned." And you know, it happens in the car business. You know, you you know you throw the ball enough times, you know, something's gonna happen. It's just part of it. This is straight up a scam, and it's 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 I mean it's a crime what they're doing, and and I really feel like it needs to be said because Facebook Marketplace, for lack of better terms, is kind of like a Mickey Mouse setup when it comes to sales. You've got people selling everything from cars, trucks, houses to Pez dispensers to coffee cups and, and everything in between. And it's a hodgepodge of stuff. And, you know, and they try to make it safe, but, you know, there's things that fall through the cracks. There's a lot of knockoff stuff on there and things like that. And I think the car side of it, or the automotive side in general, is, you know, loopy at best, you know, but it does get a lot of traffic. So, you know, we all play that game. But when buying on Marketplace, you got to watch out for this. And this is two times I've heard about this scam already on Marketplace, and it both came out of Florida. This is really a game changer problem for people. This could put somebody out quick if it happened to you. You know, everybody remembers Gone in 60 Seconds. I'm not talking about the one with Nicolas Cage and Angelina Jolie. I'm talking about the original Gone in 60 Seconds. Basically, the premise of the movie is they went to an auction, they bought wrecked cars. They would strip those wrecked cars down, grab VIN plates, yada, yada, yada. They would go steal cars like them, put the wrecked car VIN plates on said stolen cars. Now you've got good used cars. Well, you know, now we got salvage titles and, you know, and got Carfax. Because that little fox is going to protect you. <laughs> Joke. And the thing you got to think about. And they can't still be doing that in 2021. Yes, they are. So this guy bought a C6 Corvette. Nice car, good miles, had a salvage title. Said, hey, you know, it was in a front end collision. Car was fixed right, said you can't even tell it was wrecked. Busted ass down to Florida, bought the car in a Walmart parking lot. Guy has a title, Florida title. Checks the VIN on the dash. Even looks at the little VIN sticker in the door. All matches up. Car checks out. Good looking car. They made a deal. And rolled. Now, I mean, you know how many cars I have bought in a convenience store parking lot, a Walmart parking lot, at a gas station, anywhere. It happens all the time. It's common practice. He bought this car. I own it free and clear. Man, I got this awesome VIN. Drove it home, never missed a beat. Great car, super nice. 
drives it for about you know three weeks, month, whatever. Sells the car and sends it out of state. He never titled the car. He just wrote a bill sell and wrote it. Sold the car, it went out of state. Guy came down, looked at it, absolutely loved it. Hey, it's a great car. You know, salvage titles, a little cheaper for a C6 vet. Phew, went out of state. And this is where the problem lies. So now that car's went from here to here, and now it's here. Well, this guy takes said car into the dealership because check engine light came on. And there was a few other things he was wanting to do to it. And, you know, and in this dealership, they were looking at other things. I, I don't remember exactly what, but he did take it to a dealership. And when you have a good scanner, I'm not talking like a Harbor Freight scanner. I'm talking about a good, good scanner. You know, we're talking like a Modus from Snap-on or you know, an Insight, something good, you know, or, you know, an OTC or Tech 2 or whatever. A good scanner. Well, that VIN number is in the computer also to every car. Well, the VIN number didn't match the RO that the car was checked in by the service rider. Eh, you know, car's a few years old. You know, hey, they might have swapped the computer in it. Which, I'll be honest with you, the way computers are now, there's very few things that are just plug and play. They got to be reflashed, yada, yada, yada. So that's, a, that's the first red flag, but whatever. Well, I guess the technician thought that was interesting because the car was so nice. They ran the VIN number on the RO, and it said it was a blue blah, blah, blah C6 vet. There was only one problem. This is a white Corvette. So they ran the VIN number for the computer that came up on the scanner. Pops up a white C6 Corvette. Well, he tells the service rider, something's up with this car. You know, it didn't have a tag on it, just bought it. So they start digging a little deeper. Couldn't find out the VIN number that's on the scanner. Car stolen. So the first thing they do is call the call the owner, say, listen, bud, you know, you got a problem, you need to come down to the dealership for this car. He comes down, you know, this VIN doesn't match the VIN on the door. We ran the number, and it appears to be the VIN in the computer is the actual car. But the VIN that you've got for the title for is not the car you own. And so he said, yeah, it was a salvage car was wrecked in the front. So they started looking at the car really good. This car's never been wrecked in the front. It's perfect. And you got to think about a Corvette, you know, especially a C6, you know, five, C5, C6, C7s, any of them. A front end collision is a kill spot in those cars. They are so hard to fix right, especially, you know, it's not like, clipping this old school Chevelle and you put a new clip on it and you can't tell it because you cut all the wreck out of it. You don't clip a Corvette like that. You replace parts and you know you fix things and repair things. There's going to be bonding strips. There's going to be fiberglass work. There's going to be things that are going to be repaired. None of that's showing on this car. But yet it's been hit in the front bad enough to total it. Now the authorities involved, they inspect the car. They start looking at some other things closely. Notice the VIN plate on the dash, then it's got a new windshield in it, in the car. A fresh windshield in the car. Well, 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 it's a fresh windshield. People get windshields all the time. They do, but they also take windshields out when they replace VIN plates. So naturally, you got two pop rivets that hold that 17 character number down. You go, well, how about the sticker? They actually reprinted a sticker for it. And the thing is, when I say that, you're like, man, you know, that's... It's not hard to do though. It's a very simple setup. And the thing is you can't just peel that sticker off and stick it back. Cause when you peel it off, it actually is made to tear away and say void and all that stuff. But they actually reprinted a sticker and they actually got to looking at it and they could tell it wasn't quite right compared to another car. So now the authorities are involved. My buddy gets a call. Hey, you sold me a stolen car. Now imagine getting that damn phone call. Exactly. Naturally, you know, we get attorneys involved. He refunds the man his money back. But the only thing is he don't get his car back because guess what? That's property of the state he sold it in. So they took the car. He's out the money. Well, how about old Jim Bob Berry in Florida? And he's nowhere to be seen. And keep in mind, it's the second time I've seen this. And both cars come out of Florida. And the thing you got to think about when you see that deal on Marketplace, it's just a little too good to be true. 
Yeah, it's got a salvage title. That's why it's so cheap. You got to do your homework. You know, you got to look at them and, and look for some work that's been done on the front of it. You know, kind of like back to the, I remember my buddy was still in the jet skis and he claimed he was repairing them and he would literally spray a little bit of primer and white spray paint on them to make them look like he did something to them. Like this guy didn't even do anything. He stole someone's car and they found a total vet and just swapped the numbers. And then they sold it to somebody. So this man is a thief, you know, instead of, you know, it being just a one shot deal, it's done went from hand to hand to hand. And the thing is, it's so easy to do. You know, Florida is the salvage Corvette capital of the world anyway. I mean, there's more Corvette junkyards in Florida probably than anywhere in the damn world. So getting numbers for especially a two generation old vet. It's not hard to do. Or buying that totaled out, ragged out vet that, you know, some some rednecks don't pull the damn LS out of it anyway. And I mean, there's just nothing left but a bird cage. You know, it's been robbed of all its parts, but it's still got a title. I'll buy that old thing. We'll make a wall hanger out of it, or we'll do something with it. We'll make a bench out of it. No, 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 no. No, no, they're committing a crime when they do that. And that's the thing that you got to be so careful about, especially dealing with some of these individuals like this. And, you know, and this is the thing. This is the scary part is collector cars like this Chevelle. You know, this has been probably 10, 15 years back. You know, we were at this large event in Tennessee and like 10 cars got stolen that weekend. And I mean, it was all over the news, you know, locally, you know, that you know, this huge event and had 10 cars stolen, 10 nice cars stolen. And you got to think about a car like this. You've got one VIN number and a title. That's your proof of ownership. Do you know how many 71 Chevelles they made? Do you know how many 65 Malibus they made or 63 Novas or 69 Mustangs? 67 Camaros, lots and lots. And all you got to do is go online and you can literally search this vintage automotive documents. And when you search vintage automotive documents, basically they're saying car titles for sale. So you go to Osley Chevelle parts and you order you a VIN tag. You take a $10 die set from the Harbor Freight, you stamp your numbers into it off your title you just bought online from a hot job. And guess what? You've got a revend classic car. They're taking that same idea, just like on in 60 seconds, just like back in the day, those 10 cars. Do you really think those 10 cars got parted out? No, they got sent to the other side of the country, fresh titles, fresh VIN plates, and got sold. And someone's driving around enjoying them right now. Common practice, it happens. That's why you put good insurance on these cars. I preach it to everyone. Collector car insurance is the only way to ride with a collector car, period. The reason I say this is you got to understand, I'm trying to think of the best way to say this without sounding like such a dickhead. Con men prey on the uneducated. You've got to be so careful, you know, and I mean, I've bought cars sight unseen before, but I know the people I bought them from. I know these people. I've done business with these people. For Christ's sakes, I bought a six figure Trans Am in a phone call, but I also know that that's the guy that owns six figure cars. But when you're dealing with somebody that you don't know, and I was just talking to a man literally an hour ago about this car. You know, who's asking me all these questions and you know and i try to answer every question send them any picture they want you know because i understand i want to take that doubt out when buying a collector car if i sell you a car it's going to be the best damn one i can sell you you know i'm not a, i'm not a big quantity guy i'm a quality guy you know at the end of the day i just seem to have an empty building here then have a bunch of junk cars and it sure as hell don't want stolen ones on top of it that's the thing you got to be careful about. So you guys getting in the business and you see that deal on a late model Corvette or a Mustang. It could be anything. It's, they're, they're, it's not, you know, brands or anything. It could be anything, really and truthfully.
you know, both of the instances I've seen were both Corvettes, and they were both in Florida. And actually, we're both really close to each other in Florida. Might have been the same guy. We never know. You got to keep your eyes open. That good deal might be a little too good to be true. It always pays to do your homework. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbit's Used Cars. Not this one, or that one, this one. Or that one, or that one. That so it's not this one, that one, that one, this one, that one. It's this one, that one. right there. Yeah. This one, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so this camera. Yeah. Not this one, no. this one. Yeah. Okay. Wait, that one. This one. I think it's something, it's an old dealer trick, or Drives the car, decides he's, uh, drives the car for a little while, decides he's gonna sell it. Is that you? I don't know. I don't think my horn blows that loud. Is it mine? Who the f puts an alarm on a car anymore?